And yesterday was a reminder of how tough it is to be a woman. I'm a woman, I'm strong. I'm supposed to be able to carry his pain for him. You're talking about childbirth here. You're giving birth to a baby. <laughs> what is not painful about that? Pain sometimes becomes synonymous with women. Hey, what's up beautiful people? I'm Teko and welcome back to another episode where I basically talk about my life and in that impart some learning, some something uh, that I learned from the experience that I think a younger version of myself would have liked to hear or even a version of myself like yesterday morning <laughs> would have liked to hear, you know, would have liked to um, hear coming from someone else or whatever have you and because of that I think that other people, particularly women or young girls, would benefit from hearing these types of conversations. Uh, and you can, I believe that you can never have enough women talking about, uh, women talking about empowerment, talking about how amazing we are. You can never have enough of that because that's what we need to hear, you know? And today I want to talk about or I want to narrate the story of what happened to me yesterday. Um, nothing crazy. It Yesterday was actually a reminder that being a woman is extraordinary, actually. It's tough. Being a woman is tough because we go through so, we go through so much. We go through so much and yet we take on so much and we handle so much and we just go about life gracefully with our heads up high as though nothing else is happening and because of that it's kind of crazy but we're also super tough and super amazing and kind of superheroes like it's it's wild and yesterday was a reminder of how tough it is to be a woman and how much grace i should give myself because over and above that i am a person i am a human being and i should never be expected to do something more than the average person would be expected to do even as a woman but the fact that I am able to and I am capable of doing that just shows how much power there is in me to be able to do these things so without rambling too much let me just get into what happened yesterday and if you like what you're hearing uh, please do give this video a thumbs up comment down below share like subscribe do all the things you already know so Yesterday was Wednesday and if you haven't listened to my last, I think it is my last uh, video upload or my last upload where I was basically telling myself nice things that I think, that I know that I needed to hear at that time. After I did that, uh, it, I did that because I was going through a lot of things that were basically causing me to have a lot of self-doubt and look down on myself and, you know, not have a lot of confidence. But after that, I got into the habit of doing things that not only make me feel good, but make me acknowledge that I, you know, I am capable of doing the things that I know I am capable of doing and more. Yesterday was one of the days that I think I did that properly. I woke up, um, I got ready for work and I had a moment where I could you know, pray and read the word um, and then I just poured myself a glass of water because I'm not really a coffee person um, but I poured myself a glass of water and stood on the balcony and basically as I was drinking this glass of water it was sort of like like it almost felt like some sort of relaxation ritual because I was just standing there sipping on water and just thinking about the things that I'm grateful for and saying them out loud to myself so that I can hear them go out into the world you know uh, and then I closed my eyes and I took like three deep breaths. It's so dramatic, so dramatic, but I love it because I felt so good after that. The one thing I did want to do yesterday morning that I didn't do was work out. Um, slowly getting there. It's, 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 it's been rough, okay? It's been rough. But yeah, got off to a great start. And then I headed on to the office. And yeah, it was a good productive day in the office. I got quite a few things done and then things started to change <laughs> things started to you know things started to just switch up on me so 
it is also that time of the month for me yesterday was one of my heavier days um and normally when i when i am on my period i on on yeah when when it's the heaviest time of the month for me why am i struggling to say this is not even <laughs> but when it when it is uh my heaviest days um when i'm on my period i do experience a lot of cramps that feel very debilitating and they come in they come in waves really where i will just have this intense pressure and this intense pain in my lower abdomen and i know when i'm home or when i'm in like a very comfortable place whenever that happens i literally just curl into a ball and press down on my stomach until that pain goes away it lasts like a couple of seconds um, but that's what i do because it is so painful and i just want the pain to go away and this will happen a couple of times throughout the day so this started happening when i was in the office like in the afternoon and it was as the day progressed my flow was getting a lot heavier as well so i was starting to feel you know a bit uncomfortable i do prefer being not outside when i am on my period especially on the heavier days just so that i can you know be in my own space be comfortable and go through the motions when i'm at home right but still going about my day right because you know women have periods all the time and we go through this all the time and as the day goes on i realize that i do not carry enough tampons and pads to last me the whole working day Fortunately, in the office, they do keep stock in the women's restroom, so we are able to use the the, the tampons and all pads that they supply there. Um, so I was fine. I was fine, but my flow is becoming heavier, and I do have a couple of meetings that are somewhat unavoidable, and also I have this pain that is really kicking my ass, for lack of a better term. I was going through it i was actually going through it um so this happens while i'm in the office um but again you know it's, it's something that i've dealt with for years and years and years just painful periods uh, not as painful as you know i know women with actual menstrual related issues uh experience at least not that i think and not that has been diagnosed for me personally because you know there's that issue that that does exist and that's a topic for a whole nother day but i have gone through life experiencing period pains and still showing up to things the way i should i am expected to show up to things so when i come back home still you know the the flow is flowing you know the flow is very heavy and at this point i'm, I'm just not feeling comfortable i want to get home and take a shower and just you know but as i get to my apartment I check in my bag for my key so that I can open the door and get in and I can't find my key. And I put my bag down and I take out all my stuff, so take out all my laptop and like everything else that is in there, but I still cannot find my key. And I usually keep my key in like a specific pocket. It's it's normally just my key and then my travel card that are in this pocket because it's it's easy for me to reach when I need them, right? And because of that, that pocket is always closed because I only ever open the pocket when I need my key or my travel card and that's it. But I couldn't find my key. So I took out all my stuff from my bag and I, in those pockets, I pulled out the fabric to basically, you know, let everything out. And my key was not there. And not only was it not there, I couldn't hear it also. So I'm like, okay, my battery is dead. <laughs> like my phone battery is dead. I can't find my key. I'm on my period. I'm in pain. I'm hungry. And I want to get into the house, take a shower, eat and relax. But now I can't find my key. So I basically ask around for, for help with like what, basically what I should do. And I also take my laptop and luckily I had my, usb cable with me so that i can plug my phone into my laptop and charge it normally i don't carry it but yesterday i did for whatever reason so i plug my phone in it doesn't 
it takes much longer for my phone to charge on my laptop which is why i never charge it using my laptop but that was the only way i could get it charged yesterday so i plug it in to the laptop and while it's charging i i i'm just outside my apartment right so i connect I, I'm, I'm connected to the wi-fi through my laptop and i start searching for locksmiths basically because i don't have a spare key also story for another day <laughs> but i start searching for locksmiths around portugal my phone switches on so now i'm able to call people as well and you know friends and basically just ask for help and what i should do also i don't speak portuguese so that's why like you know i i, I also was enlisting help from the people around me but i get a hold of this uh basically the first number or the first company that i see when i search locksmiths i call them i tell them what my problem is and the guy was like oh i'm actually very nearby so i'll come through to your place i'm like okay cool at this point i think about maybe 30 40 minutes has passed since i first realized that i don't have my key so on his way here i start to try to um trace my steps from yesterday morning and i'm thinking that i don't remember locking my door so maybe i left my key on the inside of my apartment it's one of the doors where if you close it from the outside you basically can't come in without a key right so the locksmith gets here and he starts like you know going doing whatever he's doing by um, the door very kind old man very helpful very patient with me as well um, so he's doing his thing and all the while I'm just trying to recollect my steps but he's here he's here and I'm gonna get into my apartment soon but he gets to a point where he gets a screw and he tries to turn the screw but he can't turn it fully and when he did that he was like I'm going to have to basically bust your door open right i'm basically gonna have to bust your door open but he didn't want to because he said it's gonna cost a whole lot more to do that and then he explained to me the only reason that this could happen is because your door is locked in other words this morning you locked your door and you left so now i'm like huh so i lost my key somewhere <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> What do you mean I lost my key? So now I'm thinking about him busting the door open and having to pay a different price. I don't know what the price is at this point that he's saying I'm going to pay. So I'm thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about how am I going to get a new key? Like, I, I don't know what the process is. I'm assuming that when he busts the door open, he would have to give me a new key or I'd have to go and get someone else who's going to install a new key thing. For me and therefore give me a new key so i'm thinking about all of this and i'm like man i have work tomorrow <laughs> what am i gonna do and also i'm on my period and also i'm hungry and also i'm tired like there's a lot going on right but he says can you please call your landlord and just find out if he really doesn't have a spare key because it's gonna cost a, a lot of money um for me to basically break into the house so we try calling him he ends up being the one calling him so that he can uh, speak to him in portuguese struggling to get a hold of the landlord but speaking through the the property agency that owns the building that i'm in right so while he's doing this i'm i'm really baffled by the fact that i lost my key because listen i've lost a couple of things but if there's things i don't lose it's my phone and my key I've never lost a phone and I've never lost a key in my life ever. So I'm like, there's no ways. There's absolutely no ways I could have lost these things. Let me try and retrace my steps again. So I'm trying to think like what happened in the morning. I know I woke up on a good note and I drank water and I was on the balcony and I was doing all this meditative stuff and prayers and I had a great morning. And then I remember when I went out the door, but I can't remember anything from when I left when I closed my door to when I was walking to the metro station. So I have no idea if I locked my place and where I put the key after that, because I know for sure the key is not in the office. That I know for sure. 
and i'm like okay let me just check my bag again and just by the way i checked my bag like maybe three or four times um before this locksmith came so i had checked my bag a couple of times pulling the fabric out of my pockets right so i empty out my bag again still nothing and then i go to the pockets and when i tell you i put my hand into the pockets and guess what my key was there <laughs> my key was there all along and the locksmith he was on the phone like talking to someone at that time and i basically like start um what's the word jingling my keys clink clinking whatever it's called so that he can hear that i found my keys and he looked at me and he just starts laughing and i'm also laughing um so he then just fixes my door i'm able to get into my house um into my apartment and that is that and finally now about like an hour an hour and a half later maybe i'm in my apartment i can finally like take a shower and get cleaned up and make myself some dinner luckily i just had food that i had to warm up so warmed up some food got dinner ready propped myself on the couch put lovers blind uk on and had a relaxing rest of the night even though i had plans to be like a you know a boss babe when i got back home none of that happened <laughs> i was a couch potato and then i went to bed right after but through i remember like when all of that happened like at the end of the day like still having the pains even as this locksmith was busy and you know i don't have a place to sit and i'm still like experiencing these pains that mid-sentence it would just cause me to stop and like want to crumble and curl and you know when you're in front of people you kind of don't want to do that because I don't know i think it's like a fear of of looking weird or being dramatic because women go through their periods all the time and women have pain all the time so why are you doing the most you know so i know that when i'm out in public and having period pains i will internalize the pain and it it oh it it pains me like the fact that i was saying earlier on that when i'm in a comfortable place i will curl up in a ball whenever i have that pain means that it's really sore so now when i am in like during the people basically i feel like i can't do that i can't show my pain i can't show just uh, how painful this is and it's weird it's 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 not it's not normal to think that way so so as i got into bed later that night it just made me think about how women have internalized so much physical pain and even normalized physical pain when we shouldn't be normalizing it at all and yes i i'm for sure not disputing the fact that some women don't experience pain at all when they have their periods i know women who actually enjoy going on their periods um and when i speak to them specifically they don't know what painful periods are they don't know what period pains are so for them it, it's it's just like like a reminder that they're a woman almost you know something something like that so it's it's something that they can celebrate uh when they are on their period but then i'm not one of those women because i don't enjoy being on my period <laughs> like i i go through the motions especially the couple of days before my period i just feel like the world is about to end and i'm sad and i'm demotivated and i'm stressed and then my period comes and i'll realize oh that's probably why i was feeling this way but then my period comes and there's so much pain and there's this heavy flow and there's all these things happening and yet i'm in the office and i'm showing up and i'm having a productive day and i'm doing all these things and i'm coming back home and Though I'm tired and I want to take a shower and I'm hungry and I just want to sit on the couch and curl into a ball and nurse my pain, I am here calling up the locksmith and you know doing all these things amidst all this pain that I am experiencing. Now, I honestly think that some of the strongest, not even some, the strongest people I know are women and and It's so crazy to think about because I think that sometimes when we think about strength the first thing that we might think about is some 
muscular looking guy who is like picking up i don't know a car or, or something ridiculous like that right that that is the idea of strength that we have but i know the more i've grown and the more i've come to empathize with the things that women go through even me being a woman myself and seeing how i am expected to carry certain things versus my male counterparts how they carry things how they deal with pain and pressure compared to how women or myself deal with pain and pressure women are really some of the strongest and tougher people that i know and it's an amazing thing i think it's a it's a beautiful and amazing thing to be a woman because there's so many things that that we are able to do and to take on and to balance and to carry with so much elegance and grace and strength but at the same time i think that there's a lot that women go through that unfortunately are normalized not given the right attention that it should be given and i think as a result of that pain sometimes becomes synonymous with women it's sort of it's almost expected that women are supposed to go through pain or you know go through things like that i mean i've read newspaper articles and blog posts basically citing a study i think it was a study i'm not entirely sure i stand under correction but basically black women are seen to handle pain and that is why black women normally don't get the same care and treatment during childbirth that non-black women would get during the same event and i mean you're talking about childbirth here you giving birth to a baby <laughs> what is not painful about that and to say that black women are able to handle that and that's why a lot of black women don't get the necessary care and treatment that they deserve. One of my cousins actually gave birth a couple of years ago and she was telling me that at the hospital I think she she needed to pee in a cup or something for for or something like that. I can't remember what exactly it was or she had to take something a sample of hers somewhere and she was going through labor at the time and while she was going through the contractions and feeling all of this pain the nurses said to her they basically said to her stop being dramatic You're not the first person to give birth like we've all been through this pain just basically get your shit and move on and she's going she's having a contraction and she basically said like she felt like she was going to die it's crazy it it's so crazy but then you have women that live with endometriosis and it goes undiagnosed for years and years and years i think the stat is endometriosis goes 7 years uh before it's actually diagnosed so women would literally go through having immense pain and pressure during their periods and even when they aren't on their periods because of how endometriosis is and for years and years and years it goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed until someone is actually able to diagnose it and even then there is no proper remedy to the to the solution um to try and fix the pain there even women who are getting IUDs and such i don't think i've heard a case where a woman has gotten an IUD with any sort of like numbing agent or an anesthetic or anything like that like someone is literally going to open you up and shoot something into your vajayjay as though you have no nerve endings and have no muscles and have no feelings in that part of your body but yet on the flip of that when men get procedures done like vasectomies and things like that they go under the knife I mean not under the knife but they're given anesthesia I'm not a medic I don't know what type of things those you know like what type of anesthesia or what but you know it, I remember also I was once with someone who said to me I'm a woman I'm strong I'm supposed to be able to carry his pain for him and listen This this man had a lot of stuff that he was dealing with and I think as a partner you should be there to empathize and you know be a support system for your partner but to be expected to carry the pain of someone else 
that's a bit unfair. I've seen instances where maybe boy children who were raised by single mothers basically shoot all of their anger towards the mother. And I understand maybe from like a psychological point of view, because your mother's the nearest person there, possibly the most vulnerable person in this position. And that's the only person that you can ask questions to or throw your anger to when it comes to things like, why was my father not here? Or why didn't you raise me to be a man? These are things that I've heard people say, not necessarily to me, but these are the thoughts that they would have or even things they'd say to, the, to their mothers, you know. But when their father comes around, it's a, it, yes, they might still be angry or feeling some type of way, but that level of resentment is not necessarily the same um, as it was to their mother. So, you know, it's sad. It's, it's sad. It really is sad. And time and time again, I am reminded that in this world, women are, women are invisible, women are not seen. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm not trying to generalize and say no woman is seen. There's women out here that are doing amazing things. And even women who are just being, even if they're not doing amazing things, but women who are just being women, you know, and that is celebrated and, you know, they, they are who they are and that's what matters. But what I mean is in this patriarchal society, I think that the way that we, or the things that we subject women to and how we expect women to act in, such, in certain situations and not give women the grace to be women, even though women will still take on these things with grace, is, it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad and something for sure has to give but I think that there is power in knowing and the more women speak on these things the, the more women are able to see and identify these things and therefore the more women are able to empower each other and talk about it more and provide each other with the resources to rise above these issues um, or, or make it easier for us to go through these things because if I'm going to continue having a period for the rest of my life or until I get to a certain age then the more I share my experiences of me having these uncomfortable pains when I'm in the office, the more women are able to empathize with me and we can build a solution together as women. You know, that's why we see things like having sanitary towels in the women's workplace there for us because sometimes things happen, right? Sometimes things happen where you, you realize, oh, I've just started my period, I don't have a pad. The more we talk and the more we understand our situation as women, the more we start to see things that are built for us, that cater for us. So although it is very sad that women do tend to take the brunt of things or are expected to be strong, even though sometimes there is nothing there to be strong for because women are still people, there is a beauty in knowing that that's how women are and that's what women are capable of and it's a superpower. I think it's a superpower that we don't get acknowledged for enough and that we don't praise ourselves for enough because it's been normalized, you know. It's it's like, yeah, yes, I mean, she goes through this all the time, you know. Why, why, why should that be something to celebrate? It? Well, it's something to celebrate because it's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal for... For someone to do this and that or to go through this and that doesn't mean that women should still be subjected to that type of pain or should still be going through things like this because we can no i'm not at all saying that but it's just it's just a realization i guess of how amazing we are how extraordinary we are how capable we are how strong we are what we go through and how we're still able to show up and be the people that we are sisters mothers grandmothers matriarchs all of that you know there's so much that we battle internally just because of you know our our bodies and how our bodies are programmed um, and then there's external factors as well and i think that we carry ourselves beautifully we really do carry ourselves beautifully because it's not normal this thing <laughs> it's not normal to go through pain and everything is still supposed to be fine you know so this is basically to say 
Um, yesterday I had an interesting day. It's a, it's a day that, that comes every month and, you know, go through the same thing all the time. But not even just specific to being on my period, but I think it's an acknowledgement to self that I am an extraordinary being. I can do extraordinary things, even if it's as simple as having a period, having terrible pains while I'm on the period and still going about my day like nothing is going on. That's an extraordinary thing. And whatever pain you're going through, it should not be normalized. You should not normalize it. No one around you should make you feel bad for, for being or for showing how how painful the, the pain might be, be it physical or emotional or mental or whatever um, the, the case may be. But the fact that you carry that and are still able to go through life, that's, that's an amazing thing that you're doing. And I hope that you give yourself grace for that. But I also hope that you see how capable and how strong you are for doing that. And for that, I celebrate you. People around you should celebrate you. But more importantly, you should be, you should be yourself. You should celebrate yourself. <laughs> you should celebrate yourself. So yeah, that's basically the story of how I got locked outside my house yesterday. While well, on my period after I had an amazing morning of, you know, <laughs> of self, self-care amazing morning of self-care um, but yeah if any of this resonated with you please do let me know let me know in the comment section down below also head over to my instagram and let me know what you think i am on instagram at kate Deco. i'd love to engage with you also on tiktok as well where every now and again i just post some videos of what i'm sewing because i do sew as well um yeah otherwise just just let me know what you think Thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.